Graphics cards are still very expensive, and one of the best ways to get a low cost but still capable GPU is to head to the second hand market. Thousands of used graphics cards are changing hands every day, and in many respects, it's the only way to get a decent GPU below about $180 US. So today we'll be looking extensively at the used market and breaking down what the best options are for buyers. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components, so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable, and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet, and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess, and of course, no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Now there are many places to get a used GPU, but one of the best in terms of gathering data is eBay with extensive price history for completed sales. So in this video, I've taken the average price for the last 100 completed sales of a given used graphics card on eBay US to form the typical price for each model. Naturally, on the used market, depending on your luck, you might find cheaper models, you might find more expensive models, but these prices are generally thereabouts. I've also gone through and removed any listings for special edition GPUs which are usually priced well above normal, broken GPUs sold for parts, and any scam-like massive outliers. There's a lot of products on the used market too, so the focus today is on the last three generations of GPUs spanning about five years of releases. So on the Nvidia side, that's the GeForce 16, 20, 30, and 40 series, and on the AMD side, it's the Radeon 5000, 6000, and 7000 series. Now at the moment, you can get premium, high-end, current generation graphics cards on the used market. So models like the GeForce RTX 4090 and Radeon RX 7900 XTX are available. But often they just aren't amazing value. For example, the 4090's current average used price is $1,578 US. Of course, to buy a new 4090, you're looking at spending over $1,800 at the moment, but going used is hardly a deal. The same can be said for most products that are over $700 used, like the RTX 4080 at $860 US on average, or even the RTX 3090, which is a little over $700 US. Unless you need the VRAM of the 3090 for some sort of workstation application, used 3090s just don't make sense compared to the 4070 Super or 4070 Ti. If you're looking to spend about $600 used, there's the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti and the Radeon RX 7900 XT, both priced around $600, with the Radeon card about $15 more on average at $616. This is around an $80 to $120 saving compared to buying new, so again, you could make the case that it probably isn't worth it. $600 new gets you an RTX 4070 Super, and the 4070 Ti is less than 10% faster. The 7900 XT is about 15% faster for rasterization, but the 4070 Super is about 15% faster at ray tracing on average. So in this $600 range, I just don't think the value on the used market is good enough to consider. Where things start to improve is around $500 used, where more options become available. In this tier, there are five GPUs, the RTX 4070 Super at $516, the 4070 at $479, the 3080 Ti at $487, the RX 7900 GRE for $484, and the RX 6950 XT for $461. Now, if we're purely focused on rasterization performance, the RX 6950 XT is the standout deal. It's a little faster than the GeForce options and a little cheaper, usually resulting in at least a 10% cost per frame advantage while also packing more VRAM at 16GB. If you're not overly interested in ray tracing, that's what I'd get. But with all three GeForce models delivering more ray tracing performance and additional features like DLSS, this is probably where I'd go with the RTX 3080 Ti. Same VRAM as the RTX 4070, but typically coming in faster, though being from a previous generation, these models will be more used than you would see from a 40 series card. Again, just be careful that you don't spend too much on either of these options. The RTX 4070 is $550 new, so with the 3080 Ti at $487 used on average, it is over 20% cheaper per frame, which is a nice position, but I saw several models in that $530 to $550 range, at which point you may as well consider a new GPU, but on the flip side, there was the occasional model priced below $400. 
at a little over $400 used on average, there are three main choices to look at. The RTX 3080 12GB at $416 on average, the RX 7800 XT at $432, and the RX 6900 XT at $422. In this price range new, we have the RTX 4060 Ti and RX 7700 XT, so the used market is generally providing at least 20% better cost per frame. The best option here in my opinion is the RTX 3080 12GB, which in our benchmarks came in at a similar level of performance to the RX 6900 XT, but it's a little cheaper used, putting it in a better position for value when you also factor in ray tracing and DLSS. However, if you're considering the 3080 12GB, you may as well also consider the models available more around $350, which we'll get to right now. So if you have about $350 US to spend, there are four choices. The RTX 4060 Ti 16GB at $377 used on average, the RTX 3080 10GB at $360, the 7700 XT at $345, and the RX 6800 XT at $355. It makes little to no sense to buy the current generation models used, especially the 4060 Ti 16GB, given you could buy one new for about $430 at the moment, just a 15% premium to get a new one with a proper warranty. If you were considering the RTX 3080 12GB, the 3080 10GB is the better value card in terms of cost per frame. The 12GB card is about 5% faster on average, but is priced 15% higher on the used market generally speaking. These days though, you'll have to factor in the VRAM capacity to some extent. 12GB is a more comfortable position, and in this performance class there are usable settings that will utilize additional VRAM. Is 2GB more VRAM and 5% more performance worth an extra $56 on average? I think that's a difficult sell, so on the Nvidia side I'd be leaning towards the 3080 10GB, but it's not clear cut. Now there's also the 6800 XT, which is about the same level of rasterization performance as the 3080 10GB at a similar price. If you don't care about ray tracing, it's a toss up here between the 16GB VRAM buffer on the 6800 XT versus access to DLSS upscaling on the 3080. Factoring in ray tracing performance, the 3080 is about 30% faster in our latest testing, though over time it will get harder to fit ray trace titles into the 10GB VRAM buffer. I could go either way here, there's a balance of pros and cons between the 3080 10GB and the 6800 XT. At around $300 US we have the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB at $306 used, the RTX 3070 Ti at $311, and the RX 6800 at $312. The Radeon card is a clear standout here, offering a small increase in rasterization performance over the 3070 Ti and double the VRAM at the same price. Now the GeForce model is faster at ray tracing and supports DLSS, but 8GB of VRAM is becoming too small for ray tracing in a lot of modern titles, so it's hard to see the 3070 Ti as being a strong standout for ray tracing, and with new GPUs we think that anything priced over $300 US should have more than 8GB, so it's even less acceptable on the used market. The RX 6800 is one of the cheapest 16GB GPUs you can get, and will allow you to run at max texture quality for years to come. Around $250 US used is where we start to see even more competition on the used market. Available for $265 on average is the RTX 2080 Ti or the RX 6750 XT. There's also the $258 RX 7600 XT, the $251 RTX 4060, and both the RX 6700 XT and RTX 3070 at around $243 on average. Once again, the latest generation models command quite a price premium, so if you're a used shopper focused on performance and don't mind taking the risk on a card that's probably been used for a longer time, it's hard to justify the 4060 or 7600 XT at roughly a $50 discount below new pricing. What we also see in this price range is the premium shoppers are placing on the additional VRAM of the RTX 2080 Ti. Both this GPU and the RTX 3070 offer similar performance, but the 2080 Ti packs 11GB compared to just 8GB on the 3070. That difference will set you back about $20, and if you want to go with the GeForce option, I'd say that small premium is worth it given what we're seeing with 8GB cards these days. Now on the Radeon side, the 6750 XT and 6700 XT are similar cost per frame, so the $20 premium to go with the 6750 XT roughly corresponds to the extra performance you get. 
but generally these cards offer about the same performance as the 2080 Ti, and VRAM is similar as well with 12 gigabytes versus 11 gigabytes, so the cost per frame differences between them are negligible. If I had $265 to spend, I'd probably go with the RTX 2080 Ti as it supports DLSS. That's the main differentiating factor I see in this segment right now. Between $230 and $170 on average, there are 10 GPU options, but many of them aren't worth considering. The worst cost per frame choices include the RTX 3060, both the 12 gig and 8 gig variants, as well as the RTX 2080 Super, RX 7600, and RTX 3060 Ti. Of this bunch, the 3060 12GB probably has the most going for it with its VRAM capacity, but it's hard to make a case for any of the others. In addition, we have the GeForce RTX 2080 at $192 on average, the Radeon RX 6700 at $203, the RTX 2070 Super at $182, the RX 6650 XT at $178, and the RX 6600 XT at $167. These are the better five models to be considering. On the NVIDIA side, the RTX 2080 and RTX 2070 Super are priced to match their performance right now. The 2080 is $10 more expensive, or about 5% more on average, and in our benchmarks is 5-10% to faster. We also see a similar thing with the RX 6600 XT and 6650 XT. The 6650 XT is $10 more, or a 7% premium, for 7% more performance. The RX 6700 is similar cost per frame as well, but isn't widely available, with just a handful of used units sold this month. There isn't a lot separating these models. The RTX 2080 is the oldest card, but on average is usually the best cost per frame by a few percent, though the margins aren't significant enough to make it a standout. The main GeForce and Radeon models feature 8GB of VRAM, so no difference there, and ray tracing in this performance class is less than amazing. The GeForce cards do support DLSS, of course. I'd probably lean towards the RTX 2080 in this price class, though the 6600 XT is also a good choice if you'd rather spend $20 less. And the good news is that around $200 US with so many options available, we're getting about 30% more performance at the same price comparing used GPUs to new GPUs. A couple of tiers more expensive, and we're only looking at about a 20% advantage. So the lower we go in price, the better the used market becomes. At $120 to $160, there are again many options, though you can pretty much rule out the RTX 3050 in both its 8GB and 6GB variants immediately. These are poor performing cards that just aren't worth the asking price used, you'll get much better value from other models. The remaining choices are the GeForce RTX 2070 at $155, the 2060 Super at $146, and the RTX 2060 at $127. On the Radeon side, we have the RX 6600 at $148, the RX 5700 XT at $130, and the RX 5700 at $120, all average prices used. Now the best value choice here from a performance standpoint is the RX 5700 XT by far. In our benchmarks earlier this year, we found the 5700 XT was still a little faster than the RTX 2070 for 1440p gaming, 8% ahead in fact. On the used market, 5700 XTs are 17% cheaper, making them 23% better in terms of cost per frame, and generally the 2070 and 2060 Super are a similar cost per frame. So the clear standout is the 5700 XT in value. However, 5700 XTs were some of the most popular mining cards during the crypto mining boom a few years ago, and many of these used cards could be heavily flogged relative to some of the models that were better for pure gaming workloads. I think this has been factored into the price, so how great of a deal it is depends on how much risk you want to take on a heavily used model. If you're not willing to take the risk, a used RTX 2060 Super is probably the next best choice, with a small edge over the RX 6600 in value, and it does come with DLSS support. However, at this point, I probably wouldn't consider the RTX 2060, it has just 6GB of VRAM, and its cost per frame is only slightly better than the 2060 Super to compensate. Yes, it's about $20 cheaper, but these days it's also about 15-20% to slower than the 2060 Super, though at this price it's far better than the RTX 3050, which is slower again. At about $100 used, there are 6 options, 5 of which are from 3 generations ago. We've got the GTX 1660 Ti at $102, the GTX 1660 Super at $95, the GTX 1660 at $85, as well as the RX 5600 XT at $95, the 5500 XT 8GB at $90, and the 6400 at $97. 
The RX 6400 is an awful deal considering it's much slower than the other models, but is typically sold at a premium used as most cards are low profile and some buyers desire that for compact builds that need a basic GPU, but if you're looking at one for gaming, just don't even consider it. The fastest card in this price range by far is the RX 5600 XT, which is the same price as the GTX 1660 Super, but performs about 25% better, generally trading blows with the tier above RTX 2060 that goes for $30 more. But it faces the same drawbacks as the RX 5700 XT, where a significant number of these models were likely used for mining given their strengths in that area. Not saying that every card will have suffered that fate, but it's more likely to be heavily used than the other models. With that said, if you are willing to risk it, the performance on offer is undeniably stronger than the GTX 16 series. All three GTX 1660 models are currently priced on average at a cadence that matches their performance differences. The 1660 Ti is 5-10% faster than the 1660 Super generally, and it costs 10% more right now. The 1660 Super is 10% better than the GTX 1660 and costs 10% more, so if you'd rather not risk a 5600 XT in the 16 series, it's mostly about picking how much you want to spend. All variants pack 6GB of VRAM the same as the 5600 XT. Now the 5500 XT 8GB is also in the mix here at $90, but the issue it faces is that it's much slower than the 5600 XT, at least 30% slower, for just a $5 saving. What you gain is an additional 2GB of VRAM, which could come in handy in some modern games that look garbage or don't run well on 6GB cards, but boy is that a large performance trade-off. If you're worried about VRAM and can stretch your budget to $120, the RX 5700 is a much better buy. It's over 50% faster for a 30% premium while maintaining 8GB of VRAM. At the bottom of the market, we have the 4GB GPUs, the GTX 1650 Super at $77, the GTX 1650 at $72, the RX 6500 XT 4GB at $75, and the RX 5500 XT 4GB at $69. Nice. Buyers are pretty much saying at this point that 4GB of VRAM is not enough outside of basic titles and aren't willing to spend much more than $80 for that level of capabilities. The best value choices here are either the RX 5500 XT 4GB or the GTX 1650 Super for entry level gaming with the Radeon card offering somewhat better value. While these cards are lacking features these days, you are still much better off buying a used model than attempting to grab a new card. Anything below $180 US on the new market is generally pretty crappy and you can't even really get something for $70. So as always, going secondhand is king if you're on a tight budget. Overall. The used market remains a vibrant and healthy place to purchase a graphics card, and there are many options available at sensible prices. Generally, models are priced according to their performance and obvious features like VRAM capacity, though as always, there are some outliers that should be avoided. And as you might expect, models from several generations ago are generally a little cheaper, newer models, a little more expensive, but if you're willing to take the risk on GPUs from a few generations ago, you might find their great value. I found that the used market is especially good in the lower price ranges, where there's more competition and a greater discount compared to new GPUs at the same level of performance. Around $250 or lower is the sweet spot, where you can often get upwards of a 30% faster card for the same price as a new GPU. Even as low as $150, you can get graphics cards that are quite capable in today's games, albeit at reduced quality settings, and around $100, there's no point even considering a new GPU. The secondhand market is just that much better. Where I wouldn't recommend going used is if you want to spend more than $400 or so. Most of those segments are stocked with current generation models, and at best you might get an extra tier of performance going used while sacrificing a warranty and having to gamble on a card of unknown condition. The higher in price you go, the smaller the gap between new and used becomes, and especially if you're spending big dollars on a GPU, I just don't think it's worth sacrificing the warranty and that side of things for a small price advantage and a small value advantage as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you do appreciate our analysis of the used market, then let us know in the comments below, and also consider subscribing and supporting the channel. We have our Patreon account, links to that is in the description below. We also have enabled YouTube subscriptions, so if you want to sign up right here on YouTube, you can do that as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.